Good morning and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I don't always look like this, but I wanted to do like a different kind of um, sit down chit chat with you guys. So please subscribe. Um, I put out content. I try to put out content like three days a week, two to three days a week. Um, I do a big mishmash of stuff because that's just who I am. So, um, a big thing I do right now is about, I do lots of videos about how I'm moving to Germany in 2023. Um, we're a military family. I do lots of like home vlogs with my three kids and my two Australian shepherds and my husband, of course, and we go to Universal Disney and stuff like that. But yeah, that's kind of like the kind of content I put out. So right now. I'm about to do my hair and I was like oh, I really need to like film a sit down vlog or sit down video but I also really need to do my hair so that's why I decide I'm gonna like I'm gonna do both because I feel like I do best when I'm kind of multitasking anyway I don't know if that's just like the mom in me or maybe I've just always been a multitasker I don't know but I'm gonna um use my Chi flat iron and I'm gonna do some flat iron curls in my hair. No, this is not a tutorial. No, I don't even know how to explain what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna do it while I talk. So this video today is actually my experience as a military wife so far. Um, so I know that's got a stigma in and of itself, right? So a lot of people are like, <laughs> when they think of military wife, you know, there's a certain image that pops into people's heads. And I'm sure right off the bat, you can probably, ooh, that didn't do well. You can probably tell I don't fit that image anyway. Um, I don't feel like I've ever really fit any specific image uh, anyway. I'm always, I've been like a mishmash and I think that's just my um, upbringing because my dad was active duty army, so, you know, I went to lots of different schools. I was an Irish dancer, so hi, baby. I love it. Like, even in school, I didn't really, I didn't really fit into a lot of things uh, or any groups specifically, which I guess worked out for when I moved to Germany and I was, um, and I was in high school because it's like you always kind of want to have multiple groups that you fit in, right? Cause then it's like, you're not. Um, but yeah, sorry, my kids are gonna like constantly come in and interrupt. But yeah, so I think, you know, I became a military wife when I was 19. It was when I got married. We actually got married before Zach joined the Air Force. So, um, yeah, I guess that's, I mean, he was 19 when he, when I, I was 19 when he joined anyway. So regardless, I became a military wife at 19 years old. And at that point, you know, you're not going to fit in with other military wives. Like you just, it's, you know, you're not going to. And so I didn't really bother trying. I had a neighbor who came over. Um, when I was pregnant with Penelope, when we were living in Warner Robins, when we were stationed at Robins Air Force Base, her name was Victoria. And she came over and asked like if I wanted my maternity pictures taken. And I said yes. And I think she was the closest thing I had to a friend there at Warner Robins, but it was really strange. So. I did a few things like with Victoria, um, like I went to a few like random baby showers and stuff with her for other military wives, but I just, I never actually, I just didn't fit in. I didn't fit in with them. Like they, um, in Warner Robins, a lot of them were very, very Christian and I was raised a uh, Methodist Christian. So, I mean, if you know Christianity and, you know, those sort of things, these ladies were all very much like Baptist 
type thing, but they weren't Baptists. It's like the newfangled church in the South, or it's like New Hope or whatever. Um, and they were all like, yeah, come to our mom's group at the church. And it was always things like that. And I was just like, yeah, no, like I kind of keep to myself with my religion. And I just like, it was like, if you wanted to be friends with all of them, you had to um, you had to go to church with them and that it was just it was really like that when I was in middle school in Georgia too that it was very much go to church on Wednesdays and Sundays and you know be on the uh, softball team with everybody that went to church together and like my mom she just didn't really like conform that way she didn't make us do that she didn't really care for us too so I don't know, um, but yeah, so it's like it wasn't a terrible experience in Georgia, and I was still really young, and my mom was living in West Virginia at the time, so I, I didn't really feel the need to try to make friends, but I think that's when I struggled the most with it, because when you're still so young, and when you're a young mom, you're struggling going from, like, teenager where it's so important for you to have friends and to rely on your friends and to make friends and to never be alone. And so I was still very much in that mindset and I was like, oh my gosh, I have no friends checking up on me and I'm pregnant or I just had a baby or my baby's still new and like everybody severed ties with me. And I was just like, I was really struggling, but then I, I was like shy and unsure of myself and my motherhood at that point. So it's like, I bet I probably could have made other friends in Warner Robins, but I just, I didn't want to go through like all of that. So I, I didn't. The closest thing I had to a friend was Victoria and it was great. I feel like she definitely wanted to be my friend. I just wasn't willing to put in that work to have a friend. And so it's like she she took my maternity pictures when I was pregnant with Penelope and she I had her take them again when I was pregnant with Ivy before we um, before she moved away that same year, I think. Um, so that was really great. And I wish she could have taken um, <laughs> maternity photos with Milo, but I was pregnant with him. Um, during COVID, like the last little bit, because he was born um, May 2020, if you remember our COVID timelines. But um, yeah, so with military wives and military life, I've noticed you have to know the right people, right? It's always about making connections. And with <laughs> a lot of women, they tend to where their husband's ranks, right? So it's, you think you're in a higher class and you're more superior at the, like if your husband is an officer and it's just like, we're enlisted. So we both came from officer families, which, you know, it is a higher pay grade, right? It's, it's the better job essentially in the military is an officer. So we're enlisted, which means pretty much Zach just doesn't have a college degree. And he could go, like he has his um, associates essentially, or enough credits for an associates, but he just hasn't gone back to school. Obviously he's had a lot to do. <laughs> and he wants to one day, but he just doesn't know. So you have a lot of military wives that, yeah, are like that, that think they're superior purely because of their husband's rank, which is fine, but again, just not me, because I just never, like I debated joining the military. I think it was, it was right after I had Penelope. I was like, yeah, I'll just join, because I have my, uh, bachelor's degree so I could go in as an officer but I just never I never bit the bullet and did it so um as far as my 
impression of being a military wife, it's hard and it's not, it is what I expected because I grew up, you know, watching my mom essentially have to do everything on the family side because my dad was always gone and I know it's hard. It was hard watching my mom do it with two kids, you know, knowing the kind of hooligan I was. But it's it's hard for different things, right? It's hard because I'm in a really secure marriage with my husband and like we've been together since we were so young and we rely on each other for so much. So it's really hard when he goes and it's hard because his entire career he's been an enabler which means he's highly deployable and for somebody that wants to always be around their significant other it's just like it's hard like that's I think one of the hardest parts and after having kids it's seeing your children's face when they learn that their father is leaving again, especially because they have such a close relationship with their father. And it's especially difficult the older they get. So you think it would be difficult when they're younger because it's like, oh, all the responsibilities put on you. It's so much more for you to have to do. But I, I swear Zach's first deployment when Penelope was probably like five years old. I think that was just like the hardest because it was the first one where she was like, well, where is daddy? Why is he not here? Because he had deployed before that, but she was just significantly younger, right? And oh, it's just, it's gonna be really hard for this one because he hasn't deployed since Ivy was a baby baby, right? <laughs> and so it's, I can't even imagine, he's about to deploy for a year and he's got this like crazy strong connection with Ivy, with all of his kids, but it's like Ivy's a daddy's girl and she's gonna be asking, you know, where's daddy? Why isn't daddy coming home? When is daddy coming home? And you know, it's gonna fall on me to be like, well, <laughs> not anytime soon. So if I had to pick out, you know, one thing I hated about being a military wife, it's that one of the things I love about being a military wife is that we do get some of the best insurance um, in the country. I wouldn't say world, possibly world, right? Because we get we get that's like we get stuff covered anywhere. Um, and it's Tricare is our insurance company. And when you're active duty, you're given Tricare Prime, and so that's what we all have for free which means my husband or anybody significant other has signed their life away and then they're gonna give you, you know, insurance. I've heard on Instagram, some people try to bash TRICARE saying that um, insurance and healthcare for military members is the worst in the world. And I'm just like, all right, you're just, you're trying to nitpick here because it's not some of the best in the world and I'm really really happy for that as an example when Penelope was born she had a rare blood disorder and she had to see an oncologist and she had to have Neupogen injections which were like thousands of dollars per injection and thanks to TRICARE Prime we had to pay zero for it uh, we didn't have to pay anything they sent a nurse out to teach me how to give injections to our daughter and I it was all covered so that was amazing. I've also had radiation done on my ear for a, um, what's that called? Oh no, I'm gonna sound stupid. A, um, I don't know. But yeah, so I had to have radiation done on my ear. Also, that, I think it was about, it was over $200,000 and it, it was free for me. <laughs> Because uh, essentially TRICARE says, hey, we're going to pay this much and this is how much you're going to consider is paid in full. So if you ever hear somebody trash talking it, um, don't believe it because 
probably just salty about something or they're wrong. But um, also in the Air Force, I've learned that um, they don't really care about families. So if you're looking for any sort of support, you have to find it yourself. They will not provide it for you. Um, so like Zach is leaving and you would think, because this is something actually a job that my mom did was called uh, in the military, it was a family readiness support assistant, which is called a FIRSA. And it's to provide support for anything that families need. And they have it in the army. I'm, I thought they had it in the Air Force, but they, I haven't once in close to nine years received any sort of help um, from the Air Force for my family. The closest thing I had was when Zach was deployed when Ivy was a baby and she had to be in the hospital and I couldn't get a hold of Zach. So I ended up texting his commander's wife and I was like, hey, I just, I need to get a hold of Zach. He needs to know his daughter's in the hospital. And so uh, after that, the commander actually came over and a commander is somebody that's like in charge of that entire section um, like squadron or anything like that. So Zach's commander at the time, I wish I could give you his name cause he was amazing. Best commander Zach's had came over and like gave us dinner, like brought his wife cooked dinner for Penelope and I, Ivy was still like too much of a baby to be able to eat it, but, and brought us dinner, which is insane. Like that's so nice. That's like somebody's like CEO essentially coming and giving you dinner. It was just, it was so sweet of him. And then he also proceeded to like, um, check up on us the next few days to make sure like everything was good. And then he had Zach's like name down after that to know that like Zach was actually a good hard worker. But that was the closest thing I've had to getting support. Um, but you know, it's different for everybody. So nobody's experience is ever the same. There's certain career fields where they do take care of you a little bit better because your husband is like so at risk that they know that they have to be there for the families. But what I've experienced being a military wife is essentially you're just doing it on your own. And it's kind of easier that way. I did have one a few friends that I made in Florida got mad at me because it essentially shunned me because I've been raised to take care of myself, to not rely on others because families, my like families first. And these women made me feel horrible because I didn't want to go to the gym with my screaming baby. And I didn't always want to ask for help. If I was suffering, I wanted to suffer by myself. I didn't want to bother anybody else. It's something that I probably, you know, should go to therapy for. <laughs> but I haven't. You know, um, but yeah, so everybody's different, right? All experiences are different. It's fun. I prefer, you know, that I don't fit into the military wife stigma that I don't seem like somebody that is either entitled or I'm not going to say pathetic because that sounds mean and it's not pathetic. It's like somebody that seems like they need help, you know, oh, purely because my husband is just gone all the time. I don't need anybody's pity, you know, and I don't want to ever seem like I have or I've acted that way. But that's my experience so far as a military wife. Don't even get me started on <laughs> the motherhood being a military mom. Cause that's a whole other demon, right? But let me know if you're in the military or if you've known somebody in the military. It's sad when I consider some of my favorite compliments on YouTube 
are people that say, I don't act like a military wife. <laughs> I'm sorry, American military wife. And I'm like, oh wow, thank you so much. You have no idea what that means to me. But it's fun. Regardless, life's an adventure. Try to enjoy it while you can. Hug your loved ones. You know, um, just be thankful for every day we have, right? You never know if you're gonna get another. But thanks for, <laughs> that's how much hair I have that I'm, I'm done with my video. And I've still got like, an eighth of my hair to go. <sighs> Big hair problems, huh? And I'm gonna comb it out so you're not gonna see the finished. <laughs> Maybe in the thumbnail, I'll have it finished. And then you can see it, you can see it like that. But um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you like this video. If you wanna know any other like truths or like my truths of things, I was thinking about doing one of like the truth about living in Florida, especially where I live in Florida. That would be interesting, right? Maybe, let me know. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna s sign off. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.